say, man. Maybe I should blame myself, cause uh, maybe I got too caught up in the rap shit. But uh, for whatever the reason may be, I feel like y'all don't respect the production enough. That's me too. Now five. I just talk too much. <laughs> A lot of times I forget that what's understood has gotta be explained. <laughs> I made the music. This is what a Pisces moon will do for you, man. <laughs> Smoke, man, like yours right now. It's almost that time. I'm a fool on the beat. <laughs> Fuck the words, I made the music. Y'all tuned in with priceless knowledge itself. And this right here, this ain't shit but a little cosmic insight, y'all. And uh, that's a little vibe before we get into this real shit because uh, it's gonna get real. And I just wanna ask y'all, man, who do y'all believe in? What do y'all believe in, man? What the fuck are you really about? A lot of times thinking about that brings people a little bit of pain. So uh, this right here, <laughs> This is a little something, something about those people that have Chiron in the ninth house of their natal chart. And before I get to that all the way in food, you already know what I'm gonna do first, okay? First, I'm gonna bring y'all a little bit about Chiron, you know, a little bit of the mythology behind Chiron and a little bit of the energy that comes along with having it, you know, placed. I'm gonna bring y'all a little bit on what the meaning of the ninth house is in the astrological chart. Then after that, you know, we're gonna bring it all to a culmination and uh Get down to the nitty gritty. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get it started, y'all. So, really, as we talked about before, despite being one of the most recently discovered celestial bodies, which was like in 1977 when it was on a transit between uh, Saturn and Uranus, Chiron's power is widely acknowledged through, you know, most astrological studies, man. And, you know, the mythology behind it is kind of like this, you know, his mother was a water nymph and she was very desirable. And, you know, she was heavily pursued by either Zeus or Cronus because it differs on who you, who's there, who's telling the story on who it is. But either way, it's one of these guys, one of these gods or titans, whichever one you want to call it. And, you know, and, uh, <coughs> 
while she was running, you know, she basically used her powers to turn herself into a horse. But ultimately, not before, you know, she had gotten. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> Good Lord, John. <laughs> Now, before she had gotten sexually assaulted by Zeus or Cronus, whichever one it was. And so she ended up being pregnant and she ended up having a baby who was a centaur and his name was Chiron. She named him Chiron. And, you know, as soon as the baby was born, she was in terrible agony. She had this baby that was half horse, half God, you know, and she was tripping out. So. She prayed and prayed and prayed to be taken out of her misery and be turned into a tree. And therefore, she was. And so you have this baby Chiron, who's a centaur. And let me tell you off the real that, you know, centaurs are known for being savage and wild and, you know, living by a whole different code, you know, the G code. And uh, <clears throat> Chiron wasn't like that. He was philosophical and he was gentle by nature, no matter how powerful he was. And he wanted to help people and he wanted to heal people. And, you know, despite not having parents because his mama was a motherfucking tree and his daddy was, you know, God, <laughs> with his deadbeat ass. Ain't that <laughs> We're not even going to get into that, but, you know, uh, he blossomed and he became, you know, a well-known skilled teacher and, you know, a, a, a highly, you know, sought after healer. And. One day, as he was taking a, p a poison arrow to one of his students, he dropped it and it ended up piercing him in his leg. But, you know, he was in terrible pain, but him being a, a half God, he could not die. And so he's in constant pain and constant agony. And he's praying, praying to be taken out of his misery. And so as he's praying to be taken out of his misery, uh, you know, and, and thanks because of his teaching and because of his uh, his healing, he was he was granted that. And so they allowed him to die. And instead, they placed him in the sky to bring healing to all of us. So, pardon me. Chiron's position in the chart reveals where we've been wounded and also where there's, where there's an opportunity for discovering healing from within through acknowledgement and accountability. Then, you know, sharing the discovery with other people. Healing begets healing through compassion for the suffering of others, y'all. And if you don't know this, man, come on, man, you you really tripping. And I also say that the position of Chiron by House and Sign can also show where we have talent and access to ancient wisdom, as well as where we might depart from the mainstream in service to a really higher practicality. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, those were prominent Chiron. You know, they could become awesome educators and spiritual healers. And I feel like I have you know, a prominent Chiron and look where I'm at here speaking to y'all and it's in the eighth house Gemini. Look where I'm at speaking to y'all about all kinds of different things, man. About Chiron. <laughs> and so when we're talking about the ninth house, you know, the ninth house for me is the house of philosophy and it's ruled by Jupiter and, you know, the search for meaning really takes precedence here. And it really boils down to understanding, understanding what we see and feel by virtue of exploring and having new experiences. It's about higher education and for psychology, and, yeah, philosophy, too, and theology and all things involved, you know, what I'm saying with our voyage for discovery. And for me, the ninth is the house of spirituality. You know, this is where God lives. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, or at least where we find something much greater than ourselves. So let's just put it like that, which can really include the laws <laughs> and systems that we kind of govern our society by. Not as much as political systems, which is kind of more like Saturn's domain, but universal principles that should be inherently understood. The ninth is also about foreign culture and long distance travel and, you know, pastors, professors, psychologists, astrologers, you know, psychics and philosophers are really all found here. Additionally, the ninth house is, you know, about publishing, import and export businesses. And, you know, it really takes on a multi-generational view with really uh, can include the grandparents and the in-laws and, you know, our relationships with such. And I'm going to tell you now, look where I'm speaking to y'all. And my son is in the ninth house. OK, so this is deep with me, not just this placement, but just all of it. That's why I love to be here with y'all. 
And so when we're talking about having Chiron in the ninth house, man, you know, you know, having the wounded healer here in, in the natal chart could really indicate an individual who wound may really be derived from growing up in an environment where religious ideas or really like certain beliefs or, you know, shit about life and spirituality and the world in general really have been, you know, strictly imposed on them during childhood, which, you know, it could have either skewed their world perception or, you know, fuck with their ability to have faith and optimism and then left them feeling kind of closed in from what's really truly possible, you know, and that's in the world and that's in the whole world and possibility of spirituality and shit like that ain't really cool man you know they may have had certain ideas and spiritual beliefs imposed on them and really depending on whether they resonated with those beliefs or not you know that determined how they perceive possibilities in life you know, if beliefs such as if you do so and so, you know, you're going to burn in motherfucking hell. Or if you don't call your God by, you know, this certain name, you shall be punished. You get what I'm saying? You know, when, you know, when this shit is adamantly preached, then the child may have felt fearful about, you know, <laughs> the world outside of that belief system. That's 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 real. And they might have felt forced to act accordingly to how they were taught or it could be on the flip side that because they always believe differently you know they've always you know felt you know alienated and were ashamed for believing differently and you know they felt incredibly alone on their spiritual path but either way it hurt them and, and, and you know it wasn't cool for them to be put in that kind of box they also could have been the type of people who you know uh feel abandonment or disconnect from the universe really often feeling like energies never work out in their fucking favor in the shit they're going through or they just also feel like you know they never have luck or that their current life needs to have a higher meaning externally than it really is or it needs to be more grand than it already is you know and so they just feel like everything is always a humongous letdown and so they just start developing this pessimistic way of thinking and like, come on, man, really, this is another way that they're just abusing their self. And it, I've also seen it play out, you know, in an individual who has the great desire to manifest or learn or experience something, but actually have real difficulty manifesting it into reality due to the fucking extremity of the nature of what it is they're trying to desire to achieve, man. And, you know, I'm not talking about small little feats, man. I'm talking about motherfuckers that are really obsessed with trying to attempt to levitate and shit like that. Like, high hopes <laughs> you know what i'm saying and that's not to say you can't and at the same time you know uh these extreme ideas concepts and beliefs that they kind of get caught up in can make them start second guessing themselves and you know when they can't manifest that into reality you know or get anybody else to put any stock into their beliefs you know what i'm saying ninth house chiron folks can like question their own beliefs and fall into cycles where they feel like you know what they truly believe in is some fucking bullshit and you know they're only fooling themselves you know what i'm saying but they actually you know need to understand that this may not be the case because Chiron wants to teach them that if you truly want to experience something spiritually you know what i'm saying and i'm talking about if you want to experience something spiritually profound and this is a lesson i've had to learn in my life you have to let go of any expectation Expectations. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, <laughs> you have to understand once you let go of expectations of what you asked for, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Things start happening for you spiritually. And they also need to recognize when their beliefs about themselves and the world around them are either helping them or hindering them. You understand? And if they believe that the world is a fucked up place, then it will be. Because, you know, your own self would then choose to only perceive the negative shit in life over the positive when you start thinking like that. If you believe that the world can be approved, you know what I'm saying, improved, <laughs> then, you know, what, who other than you to fucking improve that motherfucker? Who better than you to do it? You understand? Try to always remain to try to look at the glass as half empty and half full, but also a hundred percent full because you know 
you know, half may be water, but the air in the other half, you know, is actually filled with nothing but endless possibilities. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to the point of overflowing. Real spit. And so, you know, another thing I just want to say is that Chiron in the ninth gift is that of being the wounded teacher, man. You know, it's known as the placement of the wise sage, man. You know, it, it's the person who understands how to mend themselves through using one's own faith and belief system to do so. You know what I'm saying? While also incorporating spiritual teachings and practices to benefit others. You know what I'm saying? And they can be a guided figure on the path of enlightenment to others due to their acknowledgement of what it truly fucking means to have faith. You understand? And that's that's that means they have they believe in something that's higher than all that connects us to all. And, you know, lastly, I just want to say this, man, that this can also signify having something extremely crucial happen in your life that rocks your belief system and dramatically changes your perspective. So, you know, if you have this placement, <laughs> stay woke. <laughs> and remember, just because you build like that, you don't have to build like that, man. Anything that comes with the abuse and the negativity, you don't have to feed into that shit. Don't let any negativity consume you, man. And that's some priceless knowledge in itself. And this is some priceless knowledge of self. And I appreciate all the love and support, man. If y'all are interested in the astrological readings, man, or if y'all just want to fuck with me, hit me up. If y'all are interested in any of the merch, you know, the hats, the hoodies, you know what I'm saying? You can either hit me up in the comments below or email me at mr.turner1300 at gmail.com. And uh, if y'all fooled me on any level, man, share this motherfucker. Like, share, and subscribe, man. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like we stagnating. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out there, man. I want to help other people too, man. You know, uh, this is, this is what I do professionally. Not just this, but astrology in general. You know what I'm saying? This is what my life is dedicated to, and I, I'm not, I'm eating off of it, and I'm living well, man. But you know, is I don't want to stop growing. And that's real. And uh, I just appreciate everybody that's down with me, man. Even people that's been down with me since we had, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten subscribers, man. And, you know, we blossoming like we have, man. Like, it ain't no thing, brother. Chicken wang on a string, y'all. We're going to be back in a minute with a little something, something about those people that have Chiron in the first house of the chart. And that's going to be interesting because Chiron's actually in Aries right now because that could be really relevant to any baby that's born right now. So we'll talk about it.